that every other deputy in the party does the same. I am no advocate of violence. The most I have said was that the IRA, both wings, are a fact of life and must be brought into any talks that take place in the North. If that makes me an advocate of violence, well then the following are also advocates of violence. Ivan Cooper, Paddy Devlin, Peter Hayne and the young, Eng and the young liberals in England, Dr John O'Connell and the novelist Graham Greene. When coalition came after the 1973 election, no office, no Mercedes, came David Thornley's way. That was no surprise, presumably even to himself was Labour, Labour deputy at the European Parliament, but was generally uncomfortable as a backbencher in coalition. He expressed himself as sick and tired of the erosion of civil liberties. In defence of free speech, he said he found it necessary to attend provisional Sinn Féin's Easter Rising celebrations in 1976. He was expelled from the Parliamentary Party. As for pragmatism, I'm getting a bit sick and tired of pragmatism in politics, and my soul is not for sale for the price of a seat or a Mercedes car or anything else. And if I lose my seat over this, if I lose my membership with the Labour Party, well then I will just depart quietly with regret into the background. And at the 1977 general election, he lost his seat. Indeed, he lost his election deposit. Michael McInerney. And I believe his death at 42 years of age, the saddest thing I have known among politicians in something like 45 years experience of journalism, mainly dealing with politics the Irish Times and with other uh, papers. Uh, and I think he really was another victim of the Northern Troubles. He was a man who had a commitment, an obvious commitment to Catholicism, uh, to socialism, and to Irish republicanism, which is different to any other form of republicanism. Indeed, what, uh, what happened, his, his, his emotions, his impulses, uh, seemed to dominate his intellectual mind and some of his actions were, were, were very irrational. It's early and difficult to assess David Thornley's contribution to Irish life. His failure as a politician is of such recent memory that it makes more difficult what is never an easy task. But some attempt must be made. Labour Party leader Frank Tusk. If you take together all his various activities, I think he made a very major contribution to Irish political life. You had his teaching, you had his writings, and you had his major work on seven days television, which brought to the ordinary public an awareness of political matters that I believe otherwise they would not have had. So I think taken all together, it was a very major contribution. I think it's going to, it's going to be difficult in the short run to evaluate what he achieved, but he played a role at a point of transition in Irish life which involved challenging many preconceptions but doing so always constructively, always um, with an eye to um, how things might be done better. And the fact that he came on the scene and was active on the scene during a crucial period uh, meant that he played, I think, a very important role. There were others with him at the same time. But because of his extraordinary skill in broadcasting, um, he made a particular impact. And that carried through into the early, early years in politics. Um, and I think that his contribution to uh, making us rethink many aspects of our society should not be undervalued. And anybody who ever came in contact with him was stimulated, stimulated to think, and to think twice about one's preconceptions. Gareth Fitzgerald. Enda McDonough believes that David Thornley made an important contribution in the mid-1960s. He sees him as a political theoretician, challenged by the pragmatism of the Lamas years. So he was at that time active, involved in, uh, as it were, an educational process of the wider public and a learning process for himself, which inv involved this um, development of his thinking both as a Catholic and as a socialist. And his contribution there? His contribution there, I think, is still, as it were, undeveloped. In my view, after that period, politics and the theoretical grounding of politics changed somewhat again. This was partly due, undoubtedly, to the development of the Northern Troubles, partly due to um, the losing out at the time of uh, the Just Society concept promoted by Declan Costello, which interested and even excited David at the time. And I think partly due then to, in a sense, his own shift of interest in the later stages of his life. 
so that he has left some unfinished business there, I think, for the rest of us, that Irish um, thinkers and Catholics and politicians will still have to face. Can you explore the um, relationship between Catholicism and socialism? Can you develop um, a proper understanding between them and generate uh, a political ideal and a political theory and a political movement that will capture uh, the mass of the Irish people for a genuine socialism. He has provided some of the groundwork, some of the inspiration, but it's obviously on. And David Thornley also made in his first career a considerable contribution as an historian. Professor T.W. Moody. And what David Thornley undertook to do, and what he succeeded in doing, uh, was uh, in uh, examining um, the years from 1870 to about death in 1879 when the Home Rule movement was effectively started. Um, that had never been critically examined before and Thornley's work on it uh, was of a kind that uh, I am quite confident will last. I have had occasion many times since it was published, uh, to use it in the context of work of my own. And the more I use it, the more respect I have for it. David Thornley will also be remembered as a friend to generations of his students and to his colleagues in the universities, in politics and in broadcasting. Murish Mokaneel remembers his sense of fun, of mischief, and his great generosity. Warm, generous. Uh, a lot of difficulties, uh, or the, the kind of difficulties that all great men who all great men who are in, uh, ebullient and involved with with life. He was full of life. He was very demanding of his friends. He insisted on their full and total attention. And uh, it's it's a, it's a trait, of, I suppose, of, of many broadcasters. But it was particularly so in in, uh, in uh, David's case. But he was extremely loyal, kind, and very attentive to all his friends. Gareth Fitzgerald remembers him. With very deep affection indeed. Somebody I was very fond of from the time I first met him. Uh, in later years, I would like to be able to help him more than I was able to, and I suppose like many others we'll feel we should have tried more to, to help him. Um, but certainly somebody who, will, who I will never forget. Professor Moody remembers the undergraduate, the young historian. Um, David uh, changed a, a great deal in the course of his uh, short uh, life from the time when he was a young, ardent student. Um, we all know that. Uh, but I would like to recall uh, the memory that I retain and uh, will uh, continue to retain of that ardent uh, spirit, um, uh, refined uh, and uh, perceptive, uh, sympathetic, uh, tactful, and warm-hearted. I recall these qualities uh, very uh, vividly, and I would like to continue to think of uh, these um, uh, in my memories of David, because I wasn't so closely associated with, it, with him, of course, in later years, but I did uh, retain some um, uh, connection with him, and always an affection for him, and I believe uh, that there was uh, in him a, a single-mindedness and um, 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 purity of heart that uh, never uh, vanished.